Good evening, my pumpkin seeds. It is I, your one and only master, the Pumpkin Lord. Welcome back, everybody. Did you miss me? I apologize for making you all wait for so long. I've been quite occupied these past few months. But now that I've returned, I can finally give you all another episode of Dojin Reviews. In tonight's episode, it'll be a little... different. Unlike the last two episodes where the stories in question were based on existing franchises, what we're about to review is actually completely original, meaning it's a new story made up from just one artist. We'll be reviewing two Dojins tonight, Sutaneko Kanojo and Wankona Kanojo. Both were made by the same artist, Dan Amaru. Grab your soda pops and get that last slice of pizza, cause we're going for a ride. Let's go! Our first dojo we'll be reviewing tonight is called Sutineko Kanojo, also known as Abandoned Cat Girlfriend. Our story begins in a small little snowy town where we see our main character walking through the freezing snow. On a night so cold that my ears and fingertips started to hurt, I visited a convenience store to buy dinner after working overtime. That's when I saw her. A lone girl in the middle of shoplifting. He tries to stop the girl from stealing, but she ends up making a scene, causing other people to awkwardly stare at them. So he decides to take the girl outside. When they go outside, he tries to calm her down and tell her how she'll cause trouble for her parents if she tries to steal. But it turns out, she actually has a bad relationship with her parents back home. So upon hearing this, our main character decides to invite this girl over to his house. Now realistically, if you were to try and invite someone you just met into your house, this might not end well in real life. In fact, this might be your reaction. What the fuck? But this is Dojin logic we're talking about, so I digress. We are then treated to some backstory. So the reason she stole from the store is because she always gets ignored by her parents. They wouldn't even let her back home. So she had to tough it out on the streets, you know, like some kind of stray cat. Wink, wink. And then he suggests, oh, why don't you stay at my place? She says, oh, you're just going to do weird stuff to me, aren't you? And then he says, oh, no, of course not. It's just, uh, how do I put this? When I look at you, it's like I'm looking at a poor little abandoned cat. A cat? Don't make fun of me. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Treat me like a cat. <laughs> and then finally, we get these characters' names. This is Ryo, and this is Shuji. I'm not a very cute cat, but I hope you'll take care of me. I'm counting on you, Shuji. And then some time passes, and they start to get along pretty well. Ryo enjoys Shuji's cooking, she decorates his home, they start having conversations, and yeah. I think it's safe to say that Ryo and Shuji have become friends now. Shuji even makes this little remark. Before I knew it, I found myself doing everything I could to see that smile. And he's absolutely right. Ryo does have a nice smile, doesn't she? But then one day, something unfortunate happened. Shuji had to go on a business trip for several days, and it's still snowing outside. I wonder what this means for our poor little Ryo. I had to go on a business trip for several days. When I finally got home, it was 1am in the middle of the night, and waiting for me at my doorstep of my apartment was... Well, it's none other than Ryo, who's been outside in the freezing snow ever since Shuji left for his business trip. They quickly go back inside the apartment to get warmed up, where things start getting dreary and emotional. Sorry for panicking like that. Even though you're only gone for a few days, I got so scared. My heart wouldn't stop pounding when I couldn't open your front door. I couldn't stop thinking that maybe 
You thought that I was a nuisance, just like my mom did. There's no way. I didn't want to believe it, so I waited for you to come home. Sorry, I left without telling you. This is all my fault. And then, the totally expected happens. They share a kiss. And of course, this being a dojin, it's time for the best part. Smashing. And by smashing, I'm of course talking about sex. So we first start off with some boo play. And Rio's got some nice titties, I must confess, you know? Really, uh, nice and round. Shuji's getting the right idea, and, uh, he gives them a little squeeze. If anything feels bad, tell me right away, alright? It's okay. It doesn't feel bad. Instead, I want you to do more. <gasps> Exclamation point. He then commands her to face her butt towards his face, so he can use his hands and mouth on her special place. Shuji gets a little greedy, and he starts making Ryo feel dizzy. I guess that means Shuji's tongue game was too much for Ryo. <laughs> we then move on to the next course, Intercourse. And these next few pages right here are quite lovely, I must admit. Very well detailed, very well drawn. I love these shots that we're seeing here. And it's starting to get a little crazy. I use that word because they say it right here on this page. It gets even more crazier, because the two decide to do it without any protection. I mean, come on. What is this, amateur hour? No protection? What if they have a kid? They're gonna be way unprepared for that. But, I mean, true love, what can you do? So the next day, they both go to a mall, where Shuji buys Ryo a phone. So that way, they don't repeat the incident. We then end off the dojin with Ryo next to a wedding dress. And then they lived happily ever after. So that was Sutaneko Kanojo, and I think it's great. I like this story of someone helping someone else in need in a series of unfortunate events, so... It was kind of heroic, in a way. The characters in this dojin are really good too. I mean, I can't really say much for Shuji, since there's not a lot going for him, but he was pretty cool. And Ryo's a cutie patootie, so... These are both really charming characters. You really want to root for their futures. The sex parts in this dojin are a chef's kiss. Masterfully done. You can tell how much time and effort was put into this, which makes the experience really erotic. And just to address the elephant in the room, Ryo's not an actual cat girl, nor does she, like, put on a suit which might disappoint a few people in the audience. But it kind of makes sense to me. I mean, they kind of make references to her and, and cats here and there, so... Eh. She counts as a cat girl to me, in my book. In conclusion, I recommend Sutaniko Kanojo. I'm giving this one 4.5 Demi Fiends out of 5. Give it a fap. On to the next Dojin. Our next dojin we're reviewing is Wanko na Kanojo, and already on page 1, we immediately start off with character introductions. My name is Chiho. Today I'll get to have a flirtiest time with Ryu-kun at home. Watch movies, play games, and do... lewd things. <laughs> so Chiho really wants to spend time with her boyfriend Ryu, but unfortunately, Ryu can't spend time with her, because he's too busy taking care of a friend's pet. This makes Chiho quite jealous, because she's really horny, and she desperately wanted to spend time with Ryu. It's been... one week since you let Brett suck my dick. So Chiho gets an idea. If she becomes a dog, then she'll get spoiled too. So she decides to dress like a dog, by being naked. She then goes to Ryu and admits her jealousy. I'm already at my limit. Me too. I also want to be spoiled. Woof. So Ryu decides to play along and starts giving her orders. Like a real dog. Like sitting and begging. When she behaves like a good girl, Ryu gives Chiho a treat. 
It's Dick. Ah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. As you can see here, the dialogue is, um, broad, I should say. Unlike Tsutaneko Kanojo, where it was more serious in tone, Wanko no Kanojo is more comedic. Speaking of tone, the Dojin wastes no time getting to the action, and I guess that's to be expected. The plot knows what it is, it knows what it wants to be, and the characters just jump straight into it. Before I forget, let's talk about these sexy panels. From doggy style to climaxing, these shots are astounding. I can't think of any flaws to point out in the art department. Dan Amaro did a fantastic job drawing these panels. So after they're done making love, Chiho develops a dog fetish, and now her boyfriend has to deal with it. The end. And that was Wanko na Kanojo. This was also a very good doujin. It was funny, it was sexy, and the art was masterful. If I had to make some criticism, I would say that neither this nor Tsutaneko Kanojo had a cover page, and I think that isn't right. All doujin should have cover pages. There's absolutely no excuse not to have one. But I still recommend this regardless, and I'm giving this one 4 Izanagis out of 5. And that's a wrap. Please tell me in the comments below, which do you prefer? Relaxed cat girls or active dog girls? I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. This is the Pumpkin Lord, signing off. Good night, my pumpkin seeds.